and we'll be good to go. All right, we're going. On you, try. Roger that. We're a go. Aloha. Welcome back to the Sandcast, ladies and gentlemen. We have two special guests today on the Sandcast podcast. They are actually Wilson Advisory staff members. So we're all in the Wilson family here. And those two are the one and only beer bros, Riley McKibben, Madison McKibben. What up, boys? Welcome to the show. Aloha. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us, guys. I just got like kind of nervous for a second. <laughs> why? I don't even know why. I'm like talking why? to three people on a computer screen. I'm like, oh, <laughs> first time on the Sandcast. Let's go. Because that intro. That intro. <laughs> It's Geeter esque. Like, yeah. Geeter of the brought me back to the brought me back to the Stan Sheriff days, you know? Oh yeah. <laughs> we should have played at Hawaii, by the way. I always think that. <laughs> yeah, right. Come on. I, I mean, mean it would have been right. it would have been legendary. It would have been legendary like two times a week. Right. And well, then we're... yeah. And then it'd be like <laughs> high school. <laughs> then, yeah, I know. Then we're back to high school. That's a good point. Anyway. So we're all from Hawaii, as you can tell from this story. We all grew <laughs> up together. Yes. Uh, probably spent a little too much time together at some points. I basically moved into the McKibben household and <laughs> stayed as much as right. I possibly could because I was just, I never really went home in high school. I kind of just was a nomad. <laughs> and uh, Carried um, that on to college. And then we carried that through college. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, finally, I had to get a wife to, to let Riley off the hook there. <laughs> yeah, for everyone who doesn't know, Riley and Tri were roommates all four years at SC. Yeah, exactly. I'm like basically senior year in high school too. Yeah. yeah there, was like a, there was like a span, Tri, where I think you spent two weeks straight at my house. <laughs> it was like, dude, it's, it's just, it was just too street. convenient. I know. <laughs> It's like, dude, I don't want to take you home again. Can you just let's let's just stay here, and then we we just kind of got carried away with that. Yeah, because the trick. Well, you had a car, so I was like, well, I'm not, if I go home, I'm stuck. Well, <laughs> at your house, if your parents are cool with it. If Madison doesn't get too annoyed at me. Oh, never. <laughs> yeah, we had some adventures, including um, scaling the mountain. In the I was just mountain. gonna say that. We have, a, we have a hill in the back of our house, and Tri's like, dude, let's climb it. Riley and I had maybe done like half of it, and Tri's like, dude, let's do it. That's where Tri got his nickname, the Billy Goat. <laughs> this is the first time. Do you I remember that? How, how is this the first I've heard that no Tri's way. nickname was the Billy Goat? <laughs> Tri's nickname, the Billy Goat, came from that little scruff in between his, his pectorals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's because I can jump. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Springy, springy uh, mountain climbing feet. I don't know. Oh, man. That just takes me back. Water balloon launching. Oh, I yeah. I was thinking of that. I was, like, <laughs> I was like thinking back on like how – why are the McKibbins like so into video and like editing and all this stuff? And I'm like, dude, we've been doing this stuff since we were like really young. And like – seriously. And it, it, it's, it's been like play volleyball and then like screw around and make videos. Yeah. <laughs> basically like kind of what we did for a while there. You and try you and Brad Lawson made some incredible videos back in the day. I remember sitting at Brad's house watching those like that whole oh uh, trampoline volleyball, but played in reverse for like an hour. We watched that. I was like, <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> We'd, we'd run backwards and throw stuff like really oh, far. Yeah, that's right. And then we'd play it in reverse. It looks like we're running forward and just catching things. <laughs> yeah, that's part. right. That's Genius. Before we had any other like good editing stuff. We just had a camera. That's oh, it. Oh my God. Camera. Yeah, that was right. We got to have a uh, McKibben like home video edition. You guys just like put together yeah. all the home videos. And Dude, stuff oh, like man. That. Yeah, Riley, don't oh, you have stuff? Yeah, I was just in Hawaii, and my mom had converted all of the old uh, stuff we recorded on tape into DVDs. So I spent like the last three days of the time I spent in Hawaii just converting all those DVDs into stuff we could use to edit. So I have like I don't know seventy-two gigabytes of old <laughs> oh footage. Are there are there any clips like, of like of you and Try Riley? Um, 
try it. It's funny. I actually found one video of this tournament I played in. You had just broken your toe. So, and we were supposed to play in an open tournament. So I grabbed Jameson and I played with Jameson in an open tournament. And we almost, ble we almost beat the number three seed because I had like seven aces. It was against Dan Fisher and like Greg. I don't know if, I don't remember his last name. Like Greg remember those guys? Or something. Yeah, Greg, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's dude, it's an absolutely legendary video. I can't wait to like do something with it, but it made me uh, yeah. think of those old days. I found some, I found some footage of like Madison playing with Tony Ching against like Justin Harris and uh, um, Mikey from Kauai. There's like, and with uh, Alika Williams and yeah, Kano. I was playing with with Dan yeah, Danny Alvarez versus Alika and Wayne. Oh yeah. man! I gotta say, for okay, for context purposes, we all grew up in Hawaii. Obviously, Riley and Tri were like the best 18s team, 16s, 17s team on Hawaii. They had matching board shorts, and we competed against <laughs> yeah. all the legends down in like Queens Beach and Outerger. And then like Taylor and I teamed up. And we were like the younger group that that played against each other. We had some wins, but it was like Riley and Tri who were like the team coming out of high school. Cause we're like yeah. two or three years older. So we, we didn't really like cross. I mean, we always play like you were playing. We never like, crossed over though. Yeah, like, we weren't crossed yep. over. We never played against Madison, almost ever. I don't yeah, ever yeah. remember playing against you, Madison. Yeah, me neither. But Taylor. I'm, I'm like, I'm hoping I find some of that old footage of us playing together, Try. We had some good matches. There was, there was a point, so Try and I played together, what? sophomore actually maybe just junior and senior year and i would bring try to our high school and sneak him into the weight room and like he came so many times at uh, to the weight room that were like they basically just accepted him it was yeah. totally against all the rules but try somehow became eligible to work out at our at our high school <laughs> <laughs> i was the ultimate nomad just like finagling my way and like oh yeah i go here <laughs> <laughs> huge school oh man yeah so funny i mean i was talking to danny alvarez the other day who's um one of those older outrigger kind of legends who's he helped put on a lot of the tournaments at outrigger and queens and whatever there's a whole group of them that have kind of helped us over the years mm -hmm. but he was kind of talking about like how uh those events that we played like first of all, starting on the baby court back in the day, but also like the events, the open events they put on at Outrigger have kind of like shaped our career. And I was telling him like hundred percent, if it wasn't for those tournaments that we played at Outrigger growing up, especially what me and you did, Riley, like where we were like really into it and like yeah. focused and like we wanted to beat Alika Williams so bad because mm -hmm. he was like the man and he, he was, he was a pretty good professional too. He never really like stayed and, and, did it for a long time on the mainland, I don't think, but, but like we were like, and, and he never gave us like an inch. He was yeah, just right. at us full force. He's, dude, he, he's still upset that we beat him those like last two tournaments. <laughs> Most he's still upset. Never. But I'm yeah, super yeah. grateful for that time. Like if it wasn't for Alika, right. Being, like just going at us so hard. Yeah. Uh, I feel like we wouldn't have like, put that much pressure on ourselves and like made it like such a big deal to finally like beat him yeah. in those events, you know? Dude, yeah, that's, try, yeah, that's so true. Just, we, we came back from the, the dinosaur in Kauai. For people listening, you have to be over, combined over the age of 80. But Riley and I went and tried. It was like a reunion of all the best players that we like looked up to. You had uh, Justin Harris uh, from Kauai. Who would you say, Riley? Mikey. Mikey Jordan. from Kauai. We never knew his last name. Just when Mikey from Kauai showed up at you at uh, tournaments in, in Hawaii, Honolulu, we were like, okay, yeah. there's barely a chance. He would team up with Alika. Alika was there with Wayno. Who else was there? It's just like this, this reunion of all the players. And like Chelsea was there. I was like, that guy, like if I beat that guy when I was younger, I would like, like mm -hmm. write home to my mom and just tell her how excited I was. Or like Kevin Silberstein, the pirate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the pirate. I remember Evan. So Evan's the assistant coach at University of Hawaii, but we had never heard of him. So we just see this mainland guy. And when you're in Hawaii, you're kind of like a little defensive, you know, when the mainland guy comes. He's this little mainland guy. 
what's up boys like yeah what's happening <laughs> and we're and then he came and he was like good and he started beating us and we're like what the hell is happening he's wearing his bandana and we super long it. hair up in the like, damn it the freaking pirates and that's, like, and that's exactly what he sounded like too Chad, that was a great impression <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, i'm actually super close with evan nowadays like he helps coach us when we when we go back he actually sat in the box with me and trevor uh back in the day but like he's another example of one of those guys that came back and was playing at a super high level like against us high schoolers so our bar was like set so high i feel like yeah evan oh, ran me true. through a practice uh before so after avp hawaii and before norseka that i was going to and mm -hmm. i didn't really know that he was he had been a pretty good player and i was like this is one of the best practices i've been through Oh really? To the show, so I'm interested to see what he thinks of your impression too, Try. <laughs> I know. Sorry, Evan. That was a bad one, but <laughs> maybe we'll just cut that part out. You guys can. You guys can do some post editing on this, right? <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think it's fine. That, that's what we thought of Evan back in the day. Cause it was so hard to lose against him. He just. Well, we're also like kind of like eighteen-year-old, like yeah, physical kids. You know, at that point. Yeah. There's uh, actually try that reminds me one of like my first facebook pictures ever i didn't know what i was doing so like i would upload the pictures through the profile picture so i can always find it yeah. it's all my first profile pictures is of me and try playing together and i have a picture of, on there it's of like our first final we ever made um in the hawaii open tournaments and we had lost we got smoked by evan and justin you remember that try try had prom try had prom he's like dude i'm gonna be late i'm gonna be late i'm like can you Bud, can you focus on this game, please? <laughs> and he's like, dude, I'm gonna bleed. And, and we just got smoked, and I was so pissed. And I have a picture of me, Try, Justin Harris, and Evan. Take, and they're like smiling, like, how's it? Yeah, we won. And me and Char are like so <laughs> pissed off. But I remember that, I, I like never forget that moment, because it was the first time we had gotten heckled too. We're in the finals, we're like 17 years old or 18 years old getting heckled by these like 35 year olds. I'm like, what, why are they doing this to us? Yeah. <laughs> and we got smoked. And I remember like that, that, that was, was like a the turning point. That was a turning point, Try. We never lost after that. Yeah. And that's and like when we started we putting in all the real work. We yeah. came back and we beat that guy that was heckled. Like we were like, remember yep. his name, like well, his look, everything. We were so pissed. Do you remember, but, right, remember what we, we were did? <laughs> Go. <laughs> No, no. Do you, I was going to say, do you remember what we did? We went and like stood by his court and just stood there and watched him while he was like playing in the loser's bracket. We're like, that's right. We remember you. <laughs> and when we left that day, like when I was going to prom and Riley was just fucking so pissed and he's walking off the court, like screaming at the hecklers like, F you guys, motherfucker. <laughs> As we're walking off. Oh, yeah, that's right. Good like time. lugging all of our coolers and like back to our cars, super yeah. salty. Yeah. I, I had to drive you to prom. I remember that. I put you <laughs> in the back of the car and like blitzed you there. It's like, <laughs> I was a mess, dude. <laughs> like sunscreen on the face. I stayed at prom for like 10 minutes. There was like 20 people there. <laughs> so what, oh, wait, man. what happened to the dream team then? You guys like grew up playing together. You went to SC together. Like Riley, you got the coaches looking at Try for SC, and then, then Try just bailed on you for hiding for some back. That's like well, dude, that's like well, seven years later. Yeah, <laughs> you just missed like eight years there. I think like, tell them, uh, about how I got into SC. Riley kind of there's a whole other oh, story. Yeah. There. Well, um, <laughs> so I guess tell them your I, story. I would, I'll tell them. Okay, so. I was getting recruited by SC and Stanford and Penn State. And between those three, like, I knew I was going to SC. It was just the best um, overall situation and, like, the best uh, financial situation. Um, so I, I knew I was going there. Anyway, one of the coaches, he was coming out to watch me play. And I already, like, I hadn't committed, but I knew I was going there. So I was like, dude, you don't have to come and watch me play. Go and watch my my buddy play and at that time me and try were like training every day together on the beach and um try was playing middle blocker for um in club and in club that's kind of the only way you get seen um by the by the college coaches by playing at the jo so tr everyone all the college coaches thought 
that try was a middle blocker. Meanwhile, he's like one of the most underrated outsides available. No one knew he existed. Everyone thought he was just an undersized middle. It's like, hey, he's actually an outside. Go look at him. They watched one match and tried balled out. And I think it was against Command Mail, right, Try? I think that was the only time we beat Iolani, actually. Okay, that was against Iolani. Against, wow. uh, Which is against a big Brad win. Lawson. Yeah. Yeah, that's a huge win. Like, Marinol's never beaten Iolani. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and um, so, like, immediately they're like, yeah, we're in. And so then it came to, like, how are we going to get tried to USC? And I'm not really <laughs> sure if this is, like, stuff we want to go into and whatnot, but I, I, uh, just for, we'll just leave most of the details out, but I just helped him write, you know, some of uh, you his proof essays. Read it. No, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some, just a little bit of proof, proof reading. Uh, we, <laughs> I'm like, dude, that's an entrance letter. Like, how am I going to get into this school? And I go, I go to a school, like, it's not a college prep school. Let's just say that. And he sat me up in his room because he's a smart guy, getting good grades at the best school in Hawaii. And he sat me up in his room, okay, you start writing, and then I'll come back and check on you. Like, 30 minutes later, he comes back. I got, like, a sentence, like, <laughs> um, I'm Triborn, and I want to – I like volleyball, and I'd like to no, go to school or something. Try, you wrote, my name's Triborn, and my dad runs, runs triathlons. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, Brad, lift up here for 30 minutes. What are you doing? Really good start. Like, good start. He, he just deletes the whole thing. I'm like, ah! <laughs> just spent 30 minutes on that. And then I just stood behind him, like, a little help here. Massaging his shoulders. You need a drink? Oh, man. Try that at home, kids. But, but it, all, it ended up all working out. Like, yeah. Try well, became a four-year starter on our. Well, on also, our... also, Try, didn't you go on to play on the junior national team as an outside that summer after SC signed you? Yeah. Like, talk about under the radar. No <laughs> one knew. No one at all. And it's like, oh, I'll try for outside for this year. Junior national team, outside hitter. SC's like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> this Just is great. stole him. The first time we played um, Pepperdine, I had, like, 20 digs that night. And um, Scott Wong came up to me after he's the assistant. And he's like, he's like, dude, I just got chewed out by Marv Dunphy for not recruiting you. Here. <laughs> I sent you letters, dude. You didn't listen. I wanted to go surf Malibu every day. Trust me. Instead, you got stuck downtown LA. Yeah. Anyway, that, that long story short, Riley pretty much carried me into SC, and the rest is history. But. I mean, selfishly, it solved, like, my roommate problem. Like, I, I didn't want to, like, go in there and room with someone I didn't know. It's like, all right, try, let's get trying there. Let's get my best friend up there. Ended up being a, a symbiotic relationship. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> and and he, was, he was my outside for three out of my four years there. Try what ended up being, a, what, a four-year starter? I guess, like, three di- with all the injuries and whatnot. <laughs> If you average it yeah, all out. I'm starting to realize, like, you were talking about me in high school, and you're like, you broke your toe, so Jamison played. And then we talk about college. Like, you started the whole time when you weren't injured. And then <laughs> I'm looking at my last four years, like, oh, when you weren't sick or injured or punching poles. I'm like, <laughs> should probably try to change that trend. Yeah. <laughs> I was. That's really I was. <laughs> I was with Try the first time because you threw out your back, Try. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. We're yeah. in the Auriger weight, Auriger weight room, and he's like, oh, I'm going to go back. He's all messed up. I'm going to try to push it because I'm going to try to push it like back into place and goes underneath a, a pull up bar, pushes up on it because you could stand and grab it. And then it just goes, Tink. He's like, Oh, I can't move. <laughs> and like, I had to like lay him on the floor and. I, <laughs> Went in and, like, grabbed some ice. I didn't know what to do, but Tri was stuck there for, like, an hour. Well, we had a freaking laughing attack because <laughs> yeah. I'm on the floor and he's laughing at me. I'm like, bro, I can't move. He's like, okay, hey, I'll go get ice. Don't go anywhere. And I just started busting out laughing. It's like, <laughs> yeah, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Right. Like, I can't. <laughs> that's, the other, that's the other thing to try too, is there's so many times where – you know, in those situations where you're not supposed to laugh, it's like, 
either disrespectful or yeah or like totally inappropriate and try somehow like you make eye contact with him and you end up <laughs> dying laughing i have like three distinct memories like things i can't even like say because it's just too bad and, <laughs> and we're just oh my gosh one of the byproducts of hanging out with try back in the day when i feel like coaches are getting too serious it just becomes oh my funny. gosh and that's the worst. When they got the team lined up, and I'm just like, <laughs> don't laugh. And, then, and if you catch <laughs> contact with Riley, like, it's over. And then we're for sure running laps or, like, yeah. getting called out. <laughs> perfect example. Perfect example. Sophomore year, we're, like, we barely made playoffs. We're going up to play against, like, our arch nemesis, Stanford. It's the day before we have to go up there. We're like totally underqualified to be in like the situation we're in and the complete underdogs. Everything's like kind of stressful. So we're at practice and it gets to like the end of practice, like maybe like mid end of practice. And our coach brings us all together and he kind of like chews me out for something. And I just look at him like I gave him a pretty disrespectful look. Like, who are you to tell me how to play defense or something like that? And he just ejected me from practice. He's like, get the fuck out of here. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and at the time, at the time I was the captain, I was like, why are we freaking out like this close to one of the, the most important game of the entire season? Why are you like freaking out and sending me outside? So I was so pissed. I got, and, and I was like, this is bad timing for the whole team. I get sent out. And I'm just sitting outside and like, I don't know whether to go down to the locker room or just sit there and like try to go back and apologize. Anyway, I'm just sitting there like 20 seconds later, the door opens and I'm hoping that it's the coach to come like grab me and bring me back in. And it's try walking out of practice and he's laughing. <laughs> so I was laughing. I'm like, no way. He's like, yeah, bro. I got, I got sent out of practice too. <laughs> Try got ejected from practice right after me for laughing at the whole situation. Wait, try what'd you oh do? <laughs> I was just laughing and I couldn't stop. The like, get the hell out of here, too. I was like, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, That's great. I'm not uh, condoning this for you kids out there, but. <laughs> but, I mean, all that being said, we ended up upsetting Stanford, then upsetting UCI, UCI and then upsetting uh, Pepperdine. And it went to the final four and upset Penn State and barely lost in five in the finals. Damn, that's a good Should run. Yeah. yeah. How was it so, playing uh, playing against – because you would have been playing against Brad Lawson and uh, Kavika, right? Yeah, we played against Kavika for three years and Brad for three years. Okay. Right? Yeah. Kavika's one year older than us and Brad's one year younger. Is okay. that right? Yeah, Brad's Brad's one year younger. Um I mean, it was some serious battles, but it's kind of, I mean, you know, we all grew up together, so it's kind of like that's thicker than yeah. the competition, you know. Um but it 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 is kind of weird when you're playing in college, all of that uh gets kind of put on pause because winning the national championship or winning against uh, your rival teams yeah. seems so important during that time, you know, like beating Stanford was like everything for us or beating. I mean, the problem with playing at SC is we're everyone's rival, you know, yeah. everyone wanted to beat us. So we always had a target on our back, but um, you know, looking back on it now, we're all, it all kind of resumes again. But at the time, you know, there's nothing more important than beating your, your buddies or your ex-buddies at the time. <laughs> yeah, of course. I feel like I've been re-watching uh, some of the, like, old AVP matches when, like, uh, when Try – actually, I just watched your semifinal from Huntington. Those are the most heated by far, like, when you're playing Taylor or obviously when Trevor and Taylor play together. But, like, you guys have gotten into it with Trevor, too. It's, uh, anytime the Hawaiians are playing each other, I'm always tuning in because it's always going to be a little bit extra. There's definitely yeah. extra there. <laughs> Luckily, I've only played these boys once so far, and, and we were like, me and Hayden were like already established, and that was like their first year on tour. So, 
Yeah, dude. Uh, I yeah. remember playing you guys, and we just came out of the qualifier. You guys were like seated third, and you guys were just going over on two in transition, moving me from pin to pin. Like he'd yeah. put you up, I have to go this way, and then you'd set him far away, fast. I was like, no, nah. this is ridiculous. I remember almost running around in circles, Madison and I, trying to cover. It. We're like, what? This is not fair. There's supposed to be three <laughs> touches. What yeah. is this whole like bump the ball over there and then like oh I'm gonna hit it just kidding set it all the way to the other pin and Madison's running like this and I'm doing the same in the back row and you guys are just like pink yeah, I, like, just... I, I guess we serve as hard as we can to have a chance. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. But it's definitely a it's, there's definitely a little extra there. I mean it depends too. Like playing the playing if anyone's playing Trevor, there's gonna be extra. On yeah. that one, just because he brings that upon himself on purpose I'm right. sure at this point yeah we play each other like probably depends on the seed and whatnot but we don't want to lose but it's not going to hurt as bad as like losing to trevor which i guess yeah. he's on my team now so yeah <laughs> try you're like the new sc that targets on me <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know it but everyone is your rival your right. arch rival Oh, 100%. that's right. It makes makes me better, probably. Yeah, Madison, I'm interested because, um, like, you hear a lot about you know our group, and but you and Taylor were like kind of you're in our group, but when you're two, three years apart, like when you're younger, that's a huge age difference. Like, like what we said earlier, you couldn't really compete with us necessarily when we yeah. were winning those open tournaments because you were just younger and smaller. Yeah. I think, I think for me personally, I was like, you and Riley took playing beach to like try. You, you were probably more like me and like, Hey, I'm here for a good time. And then Riley kind of sees you. He goes, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to take try. He's great. And like, try let's, let's train and take this seriously. I feel like Riley took your like fun lovingness of beach and we're like, yo, let's take this seriously. And you're like, shoots. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think you guys took it extremely seriously in high school for me and probably Taylor would agree too. It was just like show up, play, play with whoever Taylor and I would play together. But I remember like, yeah, you and Riley were kind of like a, a step ahead, but Brad being like a y little bit younger than you guys and older than me, Brad was kind of like the target for me as like my measure of how good I was. Like if you could block yeah. Brad, on the baby court, like I didn't give a I didn't give a shit about beating you guys. I was like, if I could beat Brad, I'm yeah. I'm good. I'm good there. So you guys were two years older than me, whatever. Taylor and I would would play Brad and like Simeon and Nick Costello. I think as we were trying to like dominate that, you and Riley moved up to the big court. We're like, oh, I'm gonna play in tournaments. I was like, I'm over that. I'm sticking the baby court where I can house people and just bounce. <laughs> yep. So, no, it, it was funny. Like, just kind of thinking back on it, you had – I mean, that w was our group. And then you had – you know, I'll even throw, like, Micah Ma in there. Micah Ma was, like, this kind of punk little kid that, like, always wanted to play. And he's, yeah. like, eight years younger than us, six years younger than us. He's like, dude, I can, I can do it. I can do it. Just let me play. Let me play. Let me play. I was like, like, no, you can't. No. no, you can't. No, you can't. <laughs> and he was good. But I was like, no, just no, you're out. He's like the annoying little kid who always wanted to play. I remember then, watching him and Tui when they were really young and like, you know, it's oh yeah. one of those kid and Uncle Charlie knows when a guy's going to be good from when he's like three years old. So, yeah, right. And yeah. they're peppering. I'm like, damn, this kid is really good at peppering. <laughs> like, yeah. He wasn't even close to it old enough. To, Dude, to Michael, Ma Michael Ma is like a, he's like a six – Four, how tall is he? Six four, you'd say, Madison? He's a little bit taller than me. Six six three, maybe? I don't know. Maybe six five. I don't know. Oh, really? He's pretty tall. But right. but like plays kind of like Taylor. You know, it doesn't have like the perfect arm swing as like Taylor does, or like the the exact control, but like just as fast defensively. Yeah. Like possibly more athletic or more he physical. Yeah, yeah, you just but, look at a player and he's like, he can do everything. Like, yeah. great setter, can play outside, did it at UCLA. And the, and the guys right. we're talking about, Micah Ma and, and Tui, like Riley and Try had a bunch of great club teams. We put All-Americans, Eric Shoji, Kavika Shoji, Spencer McLaughlin, Try, Brad Lawson. But 
Tui's and Micah's team, I think, might have more J.O. medals in first places than, than you guys. Well, they're the most decorated. They're the most time. decorated the club gold. volleyball team, you know. Of all time. Even more so than your guys' club. Dude, yeah. they, only, I mean, they only lost one set their is that right? careers. What? And that okay. was in 18s. I oh, couldn't. I wasn't sad. sure. That that was against, like, that's against TJ DeFalco, right, when they were playing club or something yeah, like and that? Yeah, that and that team that, that won that one set acted like they had won the national championship. Or like had won a gold medal in the Olympics. Well, that, there was that, only one set, and that was a legit <laughs> team that d- did well in college. Like TJ right. Falco, you had the setter. Who's the setter for Long Beach? Lefty Samoan. Josh Tuaniga. Uh, Josh yeah, Tuaniga, yeah. and then Enzing on the opposite. So that was the making of what a back-to-back national championship team. Yeah, wow. just playing right. a bunch of bunch of Hawaiians. Like some of them ended up being really good. Others, and it was, you know, were, were and okay, but just, players. It was just Ma'a and Tui. Like, if you looked at the rest, the, the, the setter never went to play on. The the two middle blockers were, like, barely volleyball players, but they, like, <laughs> just – they did their job. Well, and, well, you the, had, and you had the Enriquez twins who were really good, played in college, and, like, good ball control. But it was Pono Ma'a right, and, and Charlie Jenkins coaching them from, like, nine years old to 18. And there was only, like, nine guys on the team. They never scrimmaged ever. Just did drills. Oh, that's right. Charlie Jenkins drills. Crazy. <laughs> you know, I've, I've tried to tell Travis about <clears throat> Uncle Charlie. We, yeah. we had to give him a little cameo in our children's book we might be writing. Ooh, Master <laughs> Splinter? Yeah. Master Splinter, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> but I've tried to tell him, like, how influential Uncle Charlie's been, Charlie Jenkins, in mm-hmm. Hawaii volleyball, like, but, like, strictly at the youth level. Not even, like – Barely even high school. Actually, he helps in high school. He coaches. Yeah, maybe school. a little bit. Yeah. He focused so much on the young, young youth, and the the players that he's coached. That like how they've done throughout their careers is like pretty insane. Plus the winning yeah. JOs team of all time. Yeah. Yeah, that's is, true. Is that the team that's the subject of uh, Chris Austin's book? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Also, Uncle Charlie he put down more Budweisers than anyone on this planet true. <laughs> that is true budweiser. yeah he, he won't mess he won't touch bud light but budweiser is bud heavies only <laughs> unlimited exactly what a character i remember riley tried to trick him once remember that yeah he's like sitting there with his bud it's like his 20th it's like last one he he killed like i don't know 18 pack or something <laughs> and, and i poured the bud light paper. Yeah. yeah, I poured the Bud Light into the Budweiser can just to like test it. I took one <laughs> sip and he just looks at me like, pours it out. <laughs> nope, this isn't it. I'm not drinking this, <laughs> dude. There's, I'm telling you, there's gonna be a documentary on like this generation of Hawaiians, and I'm just wait. All these stories are gonna be so good. <laughs> yeah, it's funny talking about it again because like yeah. one story leads to another story. It's just casting all these fish hooks of memories you know yeah we would never arrive at otherwise have you guys done like when you like with all the videos that you guys have been doing have you like unearthed any of the old videos that you just like have gone through because i'm sure that like when you guys go and watch old videos that you've done it's probably like pretty funny to go down memory lane that way too oh yeah well yeah right now like well and like you said riley had a bunch of like old footage that our mom took so we're kind of going through that but Riley and I right now are going through all of our old videos to find like special moments for a few different projects, but we just been rewatching it. And it's actually, it's so funny. So funny to see how much we learn and like what we thought was good, what we thought was bad, how we yeah. evolved. And there's just like, there's so many like funny instances in real just like trying to figure out how we can pick and choose some of these different things that happen. But it's not like we like go back and watch our old videos all the time. Like it's yeah. it'd be the equivalent of no, you guys going never. back and listening to your old podcast. Like <laughs> number one, there's just like not that much time. And at least for us, like when you're editing a video, you've already watched it like thirty to forty times. So the last yeah. thing you want to do is watch it again. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it is funny, like Madison was saying, going back and and watching some of the earlier work that we did. Like I. It, it's strange because you have like this image in your head and that image is, 
is closer to the, the images that you're producing right now but when you scroll back like oh my god this is terrible this was <laughs> shot so bad like like oh, what were we man. thinking here um right madison but no i mean i i just went um, through a few and like one part that i go ahead oh i i just went through a few and like after the first week we started filming stuff riley's like oh let's get a green screen so we have a green screen working in most of the background of our videos. And then one of the first ones, me and Riley filmed the video outside on the beach court. And it was so windy. We didn't know how our sound equipment would do with wind. And I forget how we, we remedied it. I, or, uh, and I watched it, Riley. And you went ahead with the voiceover, trying to match your words with your voiceover. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, this there were uh, oh, some bad decisions that were made for God. sure. <laughs> Dude, that's dedication. That takes some time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and oh, yeah, I know. You, you can was... really tell. It's like a <laughs> an old bad movie where they just yeah. put English words and they're speaking Japanese. <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, it looks exactly oh, like that. God. <laughs> what was the original so like thought process in terms of like actually committing to this stuff and like wanting to go this path? as a For, professional beach volleyball player as well you know like like, like what, what was the reasoning behind starting the youtube channel yeah, or like getting, going that yeah, route yeah doing something um, on the screen. yeah i think it just i mean it, it was there was a uh, a bunch of different reasons but the like the couple that i can think of that were pretty glaring to us is like one it didn't exist yet so um which was kind of cool for us like being you know when we came back from playing indoor we kind of had forgotten not forgotten but um wanted like the fast track to getting better at beach again so like uh, you know naturally you go on youtube and you and you start searching youtube like all right how do you play beach volleyball or how to do this and the stuff that was on there just wasn't great and that was like the first time like we had kind of noticed like, oh, okay, you know, there's not that much beach volleyball content. Um, and the second, one of the second glaring obvious or reasons why we started it was we wanted to, um, a platform where we could give back to our sponsors a lot better as well. Um, we thought that like, you know, just having Instagram um wasn't enough like we couldn't provide value but by having you know a youtube platform where people are spending you know anywhere from four to 30 minutes watching your watching your stuff we thought we could possibly like give back more to our sponsors in that way um and the, then the last thing was you know we've always been kind of interested in in video production i mean i have countless videos that we made in high school try i mean anywhere from launching water balloons to um <laughs> It's funny, I actually like made a vlog in my senior year in high school, which is like one of like the coolest videos that or one of like my most one of the videos I'm most proud of making um, because it takes me like right back to my senior year in high school. But um, yeah, just like I mean, for me, th those were kind of our biggest reasons why we started it. But um, Madison, do you have anything to add to that? I don't know. I think it's great. Yeah. <laughs> When you, anyway. like when, when you started there, cause you were like, well, let's, we need to learn how to play beach volleyball with online tutorials. And there wasn't a whole lot on that. Obviously like the videos have evolved to be, you, you do a lot more than just like tutorials. Mm -hmm. And I know it, I feel like at this, at the startup stage of like any kind of creative idea, you probably could have taken that 8,000 different directions and probably talk like you probably had endless video ideas. Like how did you like mm -hmm. corral them without like getting out of control and just like going all over the map? <laughs> um go ahead madison no no you you go i don't i think like well our initial idea was to just to just only do beach volleyball tutorials yeah. um when we had first thought of the idea um when i said like we had searched for beach volleyball tutorials that was like back in 2014 or 15 i want to say and then fast forward two and a half maybe three years when we actually finally started um making the YouTube videos. So, but initially our, our first plan was to just make beach volleyball tutorials because one, there was a need for it. Um, and two, like we, 
somehow thought that we could like fill that void. Granted, like we had very, very, Madison had like minimal video editing experience. I had none. Um, I, I, I personally didn't even know how to turn on the one camera that we did have, which was <laughs> Madison's that he got in like, um, in college. Yeah. Um, so it's been like a really long learning process. And during that learning process, we've kind of discovered different avenues to take it. So it moved from just doing, um, you know, beach volleyball tutorials or like workout videos to some vlogs or like some sort of mini documentary esque sort of videos. And we're still kind of evolving and finding our voice even as we speak, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's been a pretty crazy, great learning experience. It's been fun to watch. Do you like Madison? Like we talk all the time, like you, you love like Casey Neistat. Like for me, like as a writer, like I always, before, like I try to not like base my writing voice off of other good writing, but like, I feel like, and if you want to be a good writer, you just read good writing. Like who are the big video guys that you guys watch that you're like, like that's kind of what I want to do or, or what like my well, video voice, so to speak would be like. Well, first off, like Riley said, we started off with tutorials, right? We yeah. were kind of in the YouTube, but not that much. Um, Riley was the one who kind of explored more of YouTube. And he, he comes with the idea of like, hey, let's start vlogging. I was like, what the is vlogging? <laughs> he goes, dude, just check it out. And I watch, I watch a few people and I was like, wow, these people are holding a camera up to their face and just telling a small snippet of their day or every single part of their day. And you know, we, we started watching Casey Neistat and just blew us away that he was doing one video a day of just his life. And when you really look at it at the, at, for what it is, you're like, wow, there's something about these videos that are engaging. But, you know, Casey Neistat was so good at storytelling, beginning, middle and end. And like, when you think about that, I mean, telling a story is kind of easy, but telling a story through video is something that is incredibly hard because I mean, believe it or not, Ryle and I don't really like getting in front of the camera. It's like hard. You know, we've done vlogs of the tournaments and there isn't really a beginning, middle and end, but we do show what it's like behind the scenes. But like, Riley and I are like, oh, do we do this or do we not? <laughs> like, it's, it's really hard to get in front of the camera. So you're like, okay, what do I say? And then to kind of string that together in the form of a story is incredibly hard. I always tell people like, making a story in the moment because you have to give context. We're not doing like narration or voiceover. Um, it's more like kind of just kind of see what happens. So like that's right. been like a really big learning experience for us. And we're still getting better at stringing together a story because no matter how small it is, you need to be kind of succinct and we like jump all over the place. So it's always like, we're still consistently learning and like, you know, I think some videos have more of like a, I guess, like a narrative spine than others. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of easy now if you tell the story of a tournament, but, you know, it's, it's hard. Like after a match, you're not going to give context like, oh, we just lost to so-and-so or, oh, we're, we're going to get ready to play so-and-so because it's like this balance of right. most people have to deal with, all right, I want to film this, but I also want to be in the moment and like enjoy myself. And then you throw that on top of a tournament, you're like, is even this small piece of me talking to a camera taking away from my focus? So like for us, it's just been just totally. uh, trying to weigh, weigh this and we've gotten better. Yeah. But it's like a seesaw. It's not, like it's you, not you, easy. You can't, there's so many times where, you know, you're kind of caught in the balance and it's like, all right, do we try and make good content and help propel our YouTube channel? Or like, do we try and, focus in on and do well in this tournament and it really you it it really is hard to be great at both and you kind of have to like choose um and then like the other the other part of that too which madison talked about is like right after you're done with the tournament yeah i mean the vibe is can often be really brutal yeah. you know you just came out for loss and you're tired and you're like do we really want to talk to the camera right now, which we already aren't, you know, super comfortable doing. Um, I mean, there's been multiple times where Madison and I are just like looking at each other, like, all right, we can do this. Like do like some sort of like, you know, handshake, like, come on, let's <laughs> fire up and let's turn the camera on and just try and crank this out. Um, and then there's like so many other times where it's like, I can't do it. I know we're supposed to do it, but it's yeah. just, 
whatever we'll, we'll like take the consequences and we just it's I also yeah. think, I mean, just like talking about it, like Riley said, it's hard to do it after the tournaments, but I know like one of the first ones we did was 2017 or 2018 of like Austin and like, like Riley was like, dude, I'm going into the player's tent. I'm going to interview people. And me, I'm like, oh God, like, <laughs> like when we first started making videos on like 16th street, I'm like, we look like idiots. Like we don't have a YouTube <laughs> channel. We show these cameras. I, I'm like embarrassed. People we're standing on like trash cans and filming stuff. And like, it's like, what are these idiots doing? And then when we brought the cameras into or rallied into the player's tent and interviewed people, I was like, like, are people going to be like, get that out of my face. I'm trying to focus. So you guys aren't taking it seriously. And like, that was a big concern that I had, but then like players slowly started getting conditioned to that. And you know, when you look at it, that's what major sports are, are all about, you know, is getting those sort of things and is getting those behind the scenes interviews with players. And I feel like players are getting more and more comfortable with that because they see the value in it. But because that was something new in our sport, at least since we had been a part of it, we we're like, are people going to hate us for this? Or is it taking them out of their zone? Right. And it's nice to see with what you guys are doing, like people see the value of showing who these players really are because like we've gotten some gold interviews there i mean i i was just going through chicago and riley you're interviewing try and troy fields right there and you ask him about how your, the match ended and troy kicked the ball <laughs> got a red card and you know it, it's those sort of moments where you don't think that they're that great but after watching the last dance and like granted those guys are way bigger time and they didn't have social media back then, but those sort of moments I'd think about and you're like, wow, that's, that's gold. That's awesome. Yeah. Those are great memories. So the, the last dance is so good. I'm working my way back through it again. Oh, and, really? Uh, dude, it's, it's so good. And, and what you mentioned though, about the, um, you know, I don't want to be like the guy in the player's tent, like doing all these interviews, like not only is it weird because it doesn't really happen in beach volleyball, but you guys like, that's really your first time doing interviews too. Like I, I would think in that setting, but when you yeah. look at like the last dance and like all those shots of MJ with just cameras, like, and microphones all around them, like that's what major sports have. Like look, the footage that they have of MJ is unbelievable. And like, yeah. you guys are like going to be the only ones with that type of footage if, from beach volleyball, like five, 10 years from now. It's awesome. That's something I think a lot of people don't realize. A lot of players actually is like, okay, you're a beach volleyball player. So what do you actually do? Like, what are you contributing to people and society? Like, why are you getting paid? You're getting paid to entertain people. Mm -hmm. Right. Our sport lacks that exposure, like to the real person, uh, to, you know, connecting the fan and the player um, more so, like besides the fact that, they're able to get really close in person, which is why people say it's one of the best spectator sports because mm -hmm. you can get really close to the athletes. Yeah. But like in terms of like the media part of it and every, all the great stories that are built around these other great sports. I mean, there's a lot of time and energy put into that. Yeah. And our sport kind of lacked that to be honest. Yeah. And I, think, I mean, what you guys are doing is, is huge, not just, you know, something that you're doing for yourselves, but for the sport. And obviously we're trying to, be a part of that as well but I mean at the end of the day like you you would think okay I'm a professional athlete I want to focus all my energy on being a professional athlete mm -hmm. on being the athlete part of it you know mm -hmm. but if you don't balance it you, you're not going to make a living like I learned it early on that you can win a tournament and then the sponsors don't just come calling that's what I thought happened I was like mm -hmm. okay I'm <laughs> a tournament I'm with John Hyden Where's the sponsor? <laughs> I was like, you can wear one of my Zico like tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> I wore Zico tattoos for free. No, actually... How about... <laughs> yeah, go right. No, seriously. No, no. I was going to say that's, that's a good point. Um, that's, I mean, it's a really good point and something that I feel like uh, once athletes kind of get a grasp of, it can really launch them um, in a bunch of like great directions. But once you realize that we are, you know, being a professional athlete, that's not really your, what industry we're in. We're in the entertainment business and it's not, you know, a huge part of it is your performance, but there's another giant part of it too, which, you know, 
um, focuses a lot on the media portion of it. So the more like exposure that you can give yourself um, can kind of act as act in synergy with your performance on the beach or on the court or whatever it may be. It's like a multiplier. But, yeah. Totally. Um, but like, yeah, I think that's a really good point. Like you win a tournament and then you find yourself with your hands empty and you're like, where are all the sponsors? You know, there's a whole nother portion of the business that a lot of athletes just haven't really figured out yet. And I think a lot of the big time athletes don't need, like you need to understand what sport you're a part of and what the business is in place. Because if I am the NBA and I lead the league in scoring, I don't have to create a YouTube channel or this or that. Like it's, it's built to highlight right. those specific athletes. Or even if you're a little lower level, the NBA picks players like, okay, we're going to highlight these players and create a storyline behind them. Mm -hmm. Give them a superhero name or something. Yeah. And uh, those players are lucky that they've put them, they've played to a level to put themselves in position to do that. But in our sport, that happens. Like the AVP does what they can and, and where, the, where they're at. But I mean, I think all of us have kind of seen like, you can wait for other people to do it for you or you can go and do it yourself. And, yeah. Right. I mean, you guys started doing it like, you're like, I don't care how, what, what finishes we're getting. We're starting this and we're, we're going to build something good and then we're going to, keep playing and, and and then you guys built up from there which i thought was pretty cool i kind of like went to the top and then i was like where's where's the sponsors <laughs> oh, I, have to, yeah. I have to do it myself i guess and then Probably we, you just join forces and then <laughs> you know we'll get to the media part and then you just make us good at volleyball oh, <laughs> dude i'm here let's go all this all this stuff you taught me in high school <laughs> and getting me into college or whatever you know <laughs> I'm you, here mentioned, for you. you mentioned that it's like i mean it's definitely a balancing act between doing you know do i capture this moment as a media like personality or do i focus on this as a player i feel like was last year kind of like a small shift for you guys in terms of like let's focus more on playing because that like last year seemed like i mean from my point of view your best year as a team as far mm -hmm. as playing wise was that you know, was the seesaw more leaning towards playing during season and then off season, maybe do more video stuff or could be wrong. Yeah, no, I think, I think there was a point in last year that we made a conscious decision to kind of like, you know, not make as much content during the season. I know we came with a lot of slow motion replays and stuff like yeah. that, which, you know, which are, you know, take a little while to make, but at least in the conceptualization, it's not like a tutorial or anything like that. So we definitely made a conscious decision, which helps out a lot. I think what most people don't realize is how much time and effort it takes into creating a YouTube channel. Like Riley and I both agree, there's absolutely no chance that we could do this on our own if it was just one of us. Would you agree with that, Riley? Yeah, it was, I don't understand how... I actually don't think YouTubers do it by themselves. I think they have to have a team. Yeah. And it's so in, like it's, we're already spread thin, just us two editing one video a week and like trying to make things work, you know? So. <laughs> yeah. So I think for us, like on the onset, I think consistency is really important and really good, but like, you know, we've taken this time during quarantine to really like, I think every single athlete has, and if you haven't, they should, it's like, just reevaluate, you know, what your opportunities are in the sport outside of competing, you know, and I've seen a few athletes doing that. And we're kind of doing the same because, you know, with the kind of the season up in the air, it's like, what, what else can we do? What else can we make? And so instead of, you know, figuring out what can we get done right now, it's, you know, what can we do after this, uh, this kind of pause in playing. And so that's really opened up a few different things for us, but dude, it's hard it's tough yeah it really is and you guys know like from at least from the content generation Sorry, aspect uh, uh what's it called it's it's difficult to our creativity takes up a lot of energy or at least it takes up a lot of time you know and when you add that to playing beach volleyball it's it's like the days aren't long enough for to do both at the same time so 
Yeah, I don't know. It's been it's been a struggle, and like it's crazy. We've been doing this for this is I think our third year now, and we still haven't figured out the perfect formula for it. Right. You know, I, like I mean, we're I know. still. Go ahead. I was say I don't know if there really like ever is one because like you mentioned, the creativity and beach volleyball like the balance, but there's not enough time of the day because you guys clearly like want to be doing both. Like it's very clear that you're you're right. passionate about both of those. So like there's not enough time in the day like almost in a good way. Cause you're like, I want to do this like full time and I want to do that full time just cause right. like you, you care so much about it. Like if, if you guys like wanted to put out a subpar like product, there would be plenty of time in the day because you wouldn't take so much time. Right. So I think that speaks to you guys and how much you care about it. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, it's, and we're both pretty finicky, like for uh, the content that we're coming out with on a consistent basis. Like there's a lot of times we're like, honestly, this isn't good enough. Or are we just checking a box and getting that video out and keeping up to the one video a week? Or like, should we pump the brakes and like kind of reevaluate and start making better content or stuff that's at least meaningful to us instead yeah. of you know, like another slow motion replay, which, you know, we're just isn't like, I know like a lot of people like watching that kind of stuff and I think it is beneficial, but for us, it's not like rewarding to make that sort of content, right. you know, like we yeah. want to make, like Mattis was talking about, like we want to practice building characters or like telling better stories and to be like totally honest, like that's one of my aversions to um, going on a podcast is I like perfecting things and taking extra time and in bay to produce like a well-spoken and like iron or like something that makes sense. Whereas um, being on a podcast or doing live views, those things are kind of scary to me because I'm not like amazing camera or I like having the ability to go back and like, all right, I'm going to put this out. I stuttered here. This word doesn't even make any sense whatsoever. <laughs> and I, or I lost my train of thought, you know, which happens all the time. So um, like right now, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> but um anyway the good thing is, is that when i do lose my train of thought madison and i have done, been doing this long enough for like he'll jump in and like kind of carry on or like look to him like all oh, right dude carry it like elaborate on this or, or <laughs> pick this up from here you know we've we have gotten better at that aspect of it like when it's both of us we can kind of play off one another to carry it or at least like compensate for one another's lack in in something um but yeah volleyball and content creation together it's difficult yeah it's difficult unless you can convince your partner to make it with you yeah it's just Dude, I, I mean i look to travis all the time i'm just like i'll just stop talking and then just look at him <laughs> <laughs> dude it's it's Continue this. <laughs> i mean i i think the one big like thing that that i've seen in youtube channels in volleyball is like you guys and us, we make original content, and that's hard. From conducting interviews to cutting it down to thinking about it, for us to come up with an original idea, like there's these channels that, I mean, it takes time, but it's just like it's repurposed content from, from matches, you know? And like that stuff gets views. It's incredibly entertaining, but it's like it doesn't take that much time and, and effort. And it's just like, I don't know, there's something to be said between original content and like just repurposed stuff. It's so like, God, it's so easy for you guys. <laughs> right, I know. Not, not you guys, but those YouTube right. channels. But, and like right. Riley said, though, like, that's not really, that's not fulfilling. And then, like, if you guys right. went out and just, like, clipped a highlight, you know, of someone bouncing the ball, we're like, look at this, like, bounce right here. And it got, like, 100,000 views. It'd be like, well, that worked, but, you know, it wasn't super yeah. fulfilling. But, I, like, I loved your, your media day um, video because you, cool. when you were talking about how, like, you want to tell – like the stories that no one's heard before. And I think Madison, you were on like, if I hear one more question about how we became partners, you know, like, yeah, you know, right. yeah. look at that stuff. But you got Alex Kleinman, who's probably one of the more reserved players out there to like want to talk more because you asked her about cooking. Yeah. Like yeah. That's the rewarding stuff. Like, and like, well, maybe people didn't really care about it much, but like, I loved it. And I know that you guys, like those are the stories you guys are looking to, to tell because it's like wanting to get that side of them. I think, like, uh, first off, like, I think there's something to be said when you watch creators on YouTube, at least for myself, is, like, if they're – if the creator that I'm watching is excited about it, 
there's a pretty good chance that like, I'm going to be like, okay, I'm, I'm interested in this, you know? Yeah. And I think that's a big part. It's something that me and Riley realized with our content, you know, recently it's like, okay, we haven't, we've, the ones that we've been super excited for, like you can see it, but the ones were like, nah, you can kind of tell as a viewer. Um, so that's just kind of like a bigger picture. And that's so like, making that video we were incredibly excited about because for one this was like our first you know professional production of side of things and like also this was also the uh, a perfect i guess culmination of like identifying our own strengths within each other like i've been making some videos recently but i realized how little i knew about lenses and lighting and riley's been gone so i've had to do the lenses and lighting and like I, w I didn't have any idea how to set up any of <laughs> the lenses or the, the lighting or the backdrop or anything like that. And so that was another cool side of it. And then, well, you can take it from there. No, I think, no, go, I mean, going back to what Madison said, uh, it is interesting because it's almost like YouTube somehow knows it, how much how, how much energy or how excited we are about the videos that we're making like when we're like going back to what Matt said when we're super excited about a project the views kind of show it you know when we're throwing up kind of like I don't know just filler content to hit that Wednesday quota YouTube knows it's like no nope, we're punishing you <laughs> we can tell that you guys weren't fired up on this and you guys put in like 75% effort and we're like, damn it, what are we doing? So um, I guess like the cool part now though is when, when you, and I'm sure you guys can relate, like when you guys, when you first start out, you're so giddy for views and like subscribers and you're like, yeah, look, this one's taking off, like this is amazing. But we're at the point now where, you know, uh, I don't know, it's not that like we don't appreciate the views, but we don't get that like surge anymore. Like we're not making these videos for views, um, which is kind of cool. It's almost unlocking in the sense that now we're making stuff that like makes us feel happy or like the things that we're proud of. Granted, the last couple of videos that we have come out with, like don't fall into that category, but the bigger projects that we're working on reflect that. And um, it's kind of liberating in the sense that we can now focus on the projects that are meaningful or that are creating, I don't know, some sort of reward for us internally, but, um, uh, moving the needle forward. I mean, like yeah. one of the reasons why we haven't come up with new stuff is cause yeah, we've been apart or like that, but like, uh, the, that, that video you were talking about, for people who don't know, Wilson contracted us to run their, their media day. And so we've been working a lot on coming out with content associated with media day. And so that's been taking up a lot of time. I think it's going to be starting rolling out on Wilson's Instagram next week. I know we'll repost it. I think the AVP might repost some stuff and granted the content is around the Wilson advisory staff members, um, which includes try. And so we're working on that. And then we have like, I guess, what is it? Right. What'd you call it? Rather a secret book or a black book. Oh, we have Black hours Coke. and hours of interview footage from all these players and you know, the maybe what we'll do, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Maybe what we'll do is we'll, we'll keep doing that. We'll just, you know, keep aggregating all of these interviews and then like 25 years from now, we'll make something that uh, similar to what Michael Jordan made, we'll throw it all together. Just give it to another editor and let them sift through it. <laughs> That's you, actually what, like, like, no, no, it's not the blackboard really. It's just like, we have hours and hours and hours of footage. And I think one of the hardest parts is conceptualizing the, the possible storylines or how we can thread a lot of these interviews together. Because yeah. like when you think about it, there's no real way to do it. I mean, you, I guess you could technically write it down on like a giant whiteboard, but you kind of have to like thread it together in your head like, and be that familiar with the content. For example, maybe it, Chase Buttinger talks about one concept and then you go to Alex Kleinman and then you thread that to Betsy Flint and then try said something similar and you have to all thread it all together. But I mean, when you have hours and hours and hours of footage of what, 30 athletes maybe or 20, yeah, 24 like 40 athletes. hours of interview footage, for 30 athletes. It's well, like, 
All right. We'll start with the Wilson advisory staff. We'll get that done. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll figure out what we want to do with the rest after. Yeah. But it's, it's been a mission for sure. It's yeah. like, uh, and it's been a, quite an incredible learning experience. How big is it um, having Wilson on board? I know they were kind of your first big sponsor, and it seems like they really like embraced you guys and your ideas from the very beginning. And also yeah. the AP. Uh, totally. Yeah, uh, Wilson embraced us very early on. I guess we were good you guys salesmen at the time. Thank you. I mean, we, <laughs> Riley and I made a YouTube trailer video. We didn't have any videos at the time except for this trailer video. And we called up Wilson to meet at the hotel at, I don't know, 2016 AVP. And we showed him our video with the plan of what we were going to do. And they're like, all right, let's sign you guys. How does this sound? And this was our first sponsor. We had nothing to show for it. We're like, yep, great. We're in. So they right. took a leap of faith with us. And it's funny. I think Riley said this, uh, in some, something else that we had, we were talking about, you're like, it's funny to see two and a half years later, like we're running their media day. And right. with media day, they gave us kind of complete um, control over the questions. They had like three categories of, of questions that they were looking for and so Riley and I came up with the questions to ask these players that would go a little bit a little bit further into who they are because I think that's important when it comes to our sport of trying to figure out what makes each player different from their style of play to their interests outside of the sport um and then I mean, also asking questions that would be like little confrontational like we need a little bit of drama it's gonna people are gonna really want to watch because I think that's one thing our sport misses but sorry Riley, go ahead no 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 i was just gonna add on to that but like that's a good point um and it goes back to that what we talked about earlier um a lot of times we forget about the whole entertainment aspect of the sport and granted we don't our, our goal wasn't to make it you know like a reality tv show where we're like creating the conflict but the other part of it too is um we are so familiar with all of the players i mean they're all our buddies. And so we know the internal conflicts <laughs> and like, we're, we're in this strange, strange position where it's almost allowed that we can ask these questions where if it came from a, a reporter, they would be like, I'm not answering that. But like, we, we would say it in a way where, you know, it's funny because they know we know the answer to what they're going to say already. Like, who would you rather play with? You know, small those things and we know that, that there's a conflict there and it's going to put them on the spot to a certain extent um but at the same time like you know we we really do value the trust that um the players have that the players have like have in us since we since the get-go of this whole thing like we've always told everyone like don't worry we're going to do everything we can to make you look good. We'll never make you look bad. So we're super conscious of that. And like, we never want to do anything to damage that trust. Yeah. That being said, like there are some funny moments that like we kind of will show at some point in time yeah. for a few characters. I think that's something <laughs> Travis can probably speak to a lot because he is the reporter side of things. But yeah. when I first got interviewed by him and like, I guess read an article or something, I saw him kind of digging into a little bit more of that dirt and like not asking the another sunny day at the beach, uh, with <laughs> some, some uh, oiled up beach volleyball players, you know, that standard <laughs> stuff. Right, yeah. And, uh, but Travis, I don't know that that's gotta be uh ring true with you for sure. Oh yeah. That's like, I think one of the trickiest parts of it is like when, I'm at the beach and someone's like, Oh, I'm not playing with this guy anymore. I'm playing with him. They look over me and be like, you can't write that. <laughs> <I'm> like, oh. <laughs> oh man, that should be written up. <laughs> I, I know, but I'm like, you know that that's going to be news at some point. I was like, just tell me before it goes on Instagram. And so I, I think I've done like a good job of like balancing of like when to actually publish something and when yeah. to kind of lay off. Cause like, as soon as you break that trust, like, I mean, in, right, yeah. when you're covering any sport, like that's a problem. But when you're covering like a sport where it's like all your best friends are like playing and mm -hmm. then you also right. play and the community is so tiny, like it just right. takes one stupid move to break that trust. And so it's something that no, for sure. I've definitely been very, very aware of it as I've been writing. So when people are like, don't write that, I'm like, I, I, I got it. <laughs> you know, it's, 
what the hard part is though is like that is the exact sort of drama that this that the sport could use I know. Exactly. so like yeah. it comes like it comes it's a double-edged sword like with as an athlete you're always kind of conditioned to um give the politically correct answer but like when you watch some of these other sports i mean the only way that you can acquire more eyeballs on the sport is or make the sport more relatable to other people is increasing the drama and i think like i think trevor whether he does it purposely or not like he does a great job of that and it's like hate him or love him he is perfect for to the he's he's the exact person you want to increase the drama you know yeah. he talk he talks trash he he, I mean, he's constantly throwing little jabs on, on Instagram and like poking and prodding. And I mean, if the sport was half Trevor's and then half like people that hated the Trevor's, our sport would be mainstream. 100%. <laughs> and we have to have reporters who are willing to not be friends with everyone. Yeah, Travis, but, you're ruining the sport. <laughs> you don't have to be friends with everyone. <laughs> hey, no. you already know my dirt, Travis. Just put it out there. <laughs> yeah, just, just spread it already. <laughs> but no, but I mean, it is weird though, Travis, because it, it would make you more effective if you stopped uh, playing. But at the same time, it would make you less effective because you wouldn't have that same camaraderie with all. Right. So it's yeah. like, uh, what? Do, I don't know. It's, it, cancels, it cancels out. Yeah, so yeah. I think the... You know? I think the advantage that the advantage that I do have is that most of the people, if I'm like, Hey, can you just like, you know, talk to me about it? Like before, or like, can we post like you go on Instagram and then I'll post it right after. And like, so I'll get that sort of inside track. Not that I'm competing for a lot of breaking news on beach volleyball. But, yeah. but I, I think like us being friends with the players, I'm sure you guys have, have um, kind of come across this too, is that, like people will say things and then they'll sort of like catch themselves and be like, Oh, can I, can I say that? Like we get it on the podcast right. a lot where yeah. because we're friends, they kind of let their guards down. They're like, Oh man, like that wasn't the politically correct move. Like this is crazy. Right. That's <laughs> but goal. it's not crazy. It's what should happen. I know. <laughs> I, I was just going to say that I think when it comes to the media opportunities in our sport for people to really be who they are and say those things, it's, it's not going to come on Amazon because it's national TV. You're going to say the other team played great. My partner's awesome. And, you know, maybe you have a few engaging things, but I think outside of maybe the videos we make, which isn't really newsworthy, it touches upon who these players are, but you guys doing the sand cast, I'm sure you guys have gotten very close to getting like, you know, to, to show who these players are a little bit more. It's not get those PC sort of answers that make me just go, eh, I'm out. <laughs> so yeah it's just there's not many opportunities for them to do that you know where james harden's like get this all the time i'm gonna speak my mind like anyway (laughs) well james harden has a a like hundred million dollar excuse not to say certain things (laughs) we don't have that excuse we need to just be us and, and let it you know let your real story come out yeah but yeah you guys, uh, you mentioned a, a few bigger projects you're working on. I don't want to keep you for like too crazy long, or I don't know if you guys want to like give a rundown of what the big projects are that people can be looking forward to. Yeah. Um, I think well, one of the biggest ones we're working on is, is Wilson. And so that is, like we said, 30 players, 40 hours of interview footage. And then We've been working with AVP and they've been nice enough to lend us kind of like B-roll action shots that they've taken throughout 2019 season, which is upwards of 40 to 50 hours. So right <laughs> now we're, we're coming out with the first 10 videos, which are all Wilson advisory staff members, but we're slowly like identifying each player's sequence of all these, these clips. So hopefully it'll be easier to kind of plug and play. And so they, they shot some amazing stuff. So it'll be really cool to have like talking head interviews of players answering questions that are relevant to them with some, some pretty cool B roll. So those will be rolling out slowly. Um, you know, in terms of content on our channel, Riley, do you want to tell them a little bit of one of the ideas we're thinking of? I mean, honestly, like, well, um, unfortunately this Wednesday we're coming out with like another, uh slow motion that we just have like built up 
but actually I have like so much B-roll from uh, tournaments that we just never got around to editing that um, we have like unlimited slow motion videos that we could <laughs> post, but like those yeah. just like, we just don't want our whole channel to be full of slow motion videos. Um, as far as like big projects, like I said, we have the Wilson, but like, we are still kind of in this brainstorming phase and like yeah. don't really, you know how like you kind of have this vision of something that I don't know, you could possibly do to like change things up a little bit, but like you can't really define it. We're kind of like in that area yeah. and like almost can grab onto something tangible, but right now it's just, I wish we could talk about it, but we don't, we don't even really. Yeah. You that's such really a know, that's such a fun place to be though when like you just like the mind's going and you yeah. know it's cooking up something good you don't know exactly yeah. where it's going but it's you can it's feel it yeah, yeah you can feel it and you just can't like uh, it's hard it's, but i think like for us um our main goal is to continue to or at least or like to start innovating again i think uh, one of the reasons why we had like such great success in the in the very beginning um was because one we were, we were like we spent a lot of time like writing and trying to make the content like at least somewhat entertaining you know like our our videos that we made with taylor and um the how to hit a volleyball like there's just like some some funny nuggets in there yeah. and, um it was it was different than a lot of like the volleyball content that was already out there and i think that's something that we want to come back to um, not necessarily writing up scripts per se and like trying to make them funnier or whatnot, but just to change things up from a content standpoint, no more slow motion stuff. If we can help it um, try to, I don't know, something with a little bit more girth and body behind it and something that we can fire up for. Yeah. Isn't it amazing how putting stuff in slow motion just makes it so interesting. Oh, I know. Yeah. Dude, I literally, you know the Apple screensavers on the TV? Ooh, yeah. those are great. <laughs> I just stand there. I'm just like, oh, sick. <laughs> yeah, right. They are really rad. I, I thought about making like a three-hour long uh, slow motion video video of just beach volleyball with cool music. So that way like, people could just put it on like in the background and just, you know, I don't know, at a, at a bar or something. Just have like, a this is your motion. Apple screensaver? Or yeah, yeah. screensavers. <laughs> just like a yeah. thick drive and the sand's like spraying up, but it's taking like yeah. two minutes to get the one dive. Exactly. Yeah. I have so many of those dives slowed down. Granted, like most of them aren't like picking up the final, you know, it's not a great save, but like you're getting there barely. And then that yeah. sand spray is so gratifying. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> Gabby sent me a picture of Try looking at a screensaver of kelp, and I was like, I thought they were watching like like blue like Blue Earth or whatever the documentary is, and it's like, nope, just a screensaver on kelp. I've seen that screensaver, Try. I like that one. It's cool, right? I, it's rad. It's cool, beach. right? <laughs> I think it's awesome. And I'm like swimming down there. I'm, I'm picturing what the scuba divers seeing. I'm like, this is <laughs> fish are just. See, I'm thinking like, when is the great white shark gonna come? Oh, yeah. Dude, yeah. there's some new ones, too. There's a whale one. There's some dolphin ones. All right, I'll go turn it on right now. So we're not really yeah. turning on the TV. Just so you let have it to go turn to screen the TV on and then wait 10 minutes. And okay. Then <laughs> wait 10 minutes. All right. And then it'll turn off after 10, though. It's kind of a bummer. You're just standing there waiting, and then it just goes black. <laughs> and then Gabby presses play. You're like, God. <laughs> I was watching that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god all right boys, boys. we gotta get you out of here this is one of the longer podcasts which means it's a good conversation no thanks thanks but for like, having us i appreciate yeah, it we're stoked how's the, um you guys uh touching the volleyball at yet how are you dealing with quarantine working out peppering staying in shape probably gonna head yep. down to the beach this week and start training but dude what's any word on the avp uh no i believe there's we're hoping they tell us something this week gotcha anything on the fivb fivb does not sound great so okay. no that sounds oh, a bit more Trevor, the team of the week apparently <laughs> yeah buddy
Thanks to Travis. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Good like, to have my, my, you up. It's an inside job right there. Yeah. <laughs> Travis is writing articles about me. Good to be well connected. <laughs> anyway, solid. Yeah. Thanks, boys. Yeah, thanks. thanks for having oh, us. Thank you fun. for having us. All right, so, boys. It's been well, fun. Hopefully, we'll see you guys in person here soon. Yeah, or talk I mean, tomorrow. We'll <laughs> talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> Well, yeah, we got another little something coming out for all of our fans. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, it, so it's just, just a warm-up. Just innovating. Yeah. <laughs> Already innovating. MCKB yeah. and Sandcast collab. Yeah. This should be good. <laughs> all right, boys. We'll see you in, uh, like, I don't know, 12 hours. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> Shoots. All right, guys. All Thanks right, for guys. having us. See ya. Shoots. Bye. Later.